And we're on. Hi, this is our Sunday School lesson for April 11th, 2021. We're glad to have you join us. I'm Pastor Katie. This is Lynn and Brayden. Hey, we have a special um, lesson for you today. So we want you to make sure that you put your listening ears on, put all your distractions away, and let's have some time together. Our lesson today is exciting. It's about asking questions and being okay sometimes to, well, not be okay, but to ask questions with a safe person. Lynn's going to talk about it. I love that word. Do you have a safe person? A safe person is somebody that you can ask a question to and say, can I ask you a question without being pushed into an answer? Sometimes, you know what? It's my dog. It's my cat. I can ask them questions and not worry that someone's going to make me answer a certain way, but just listen and then know I'm loved. I'm going to go ahead and start our lesson today because it's time for us to pray. When I pray, I like to hold my hands because this is about God. I then bow my head, close my eyes, and I'm going to invite you to repeat after me. Dear God. You're Dear God, God, thank you. Thank, thank you for loving me. For loving me. For giving me. For giving me. Forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. And I am going to say, did you hear? I use the word me, and Braden said us, because I usually say us. I want us all to remember that a prayer is both something we do together, and it's also God listening just to us. Well, we have all this Easter excitement to talk about. Lynn's going to jump in and just take it away. Take it away, Lynn. Today, we're going to learn about a guy who wasn't sure that he believed in what he believed. He felt that he needed proof. And yep, Braden's showing the story. The story is going to be about Thomas. Thomas was one of Jesus's disciples. And after Jesus died, the disciples had many feelings. Can you even imagine your best friend and teacher dying? And then your best friend and teacher saying that they're going to come back alive. What kind of feelings would we have? Confusion, sadness, afraid, <laughs> surprise. Braden put up that funny, that's so cute. Um, but also they were scared because they're like, oh, wow. Jesus, our friend, was just murdered and killed. We could get killed, too. Our families could get killed, too. So they all went and hid because <clears throat> they were afraid. And they heard that Jesus had come back alive, but it still was tough to believe that it really would happen. We all have doubts. Maybe you guys have questions, too. You have doubts about something you, you want to know. Your doubts and questions are welcome here. Your doubts can be, I, I, I remember one time I had doubts, well, more than one time, and I had questions about, you know, my parenting and how to parent my kids. And I talked to my friend, Pastor Katie, and Pastor Katie listened, and she accepted me just the way I was. And she didn't try to answer all my questions, but she listened. And that's what, that's what pastors do that's what I can do that's what your parents or your safe person can do grandparents a lot of you guys have grandparents that you can talk to you can pray to Jesus Jesus will always love you and always listen to you um, and it's okay not to believe everything right away um, I was looking on the internet for a quick fast diet you think I should do it, it could be real right oh it could be a scam better not. Not all things are real and that's okay not to believe. It's okay to say, hey, I want some proof that this is a real thing. Are you going to take my money and not give it back or is this a real thing? So sometimes we need proof just like Thomas did and that's okay. And sometimes we have questions about our faith and about God and that is okay too. So we're going to have the story of that Braden's going to read the story about Thomas, and then we're gonna understand it a little better. The disciples were hiding in a house that night. Jesus rose from the dead. They were afraid. Bam, they locked all the doors. Jesus came and stood by them. Peace be with you, he said. The disciples looked up in surprise. Jesus showed them his hands and his side so that they would know it was him. The disciples were very happy. 
again. Jesus said to them, peace be with you. God has sent me to you. Now it's your turn to go tell the rest of the world about me. Jesus breathed on them in a very special way. He said, with this breath, I will always be in your hearts, even when I am in heaven. You will now have the power to do the things I have asked you to do. Thomas was, on, was the only disciple not there that night. When he got back, the others excitedly told him about Jesus' visit. I don't believe you, Thomas said. I'll believe when I can touch Jesus' wounds. A week later, Thomas and the other and the other disciples were in the same house. Jesus came Jesus, in the same house. Jesus came again and stood with them. Peace be with you, he said to them. Thomas, Jesus commanded, come here. Give me your hand, your hands. Put your finger on the wound in my hand. Put your hand by the wound in my side. Do not doubt anymore. It's time for you to, to believe. Thomas' eyes popped out. My Lord and my God, he explained. Jesus answered him, you believe because I am here with you and you have seen me. Think of those who, you, who have not seen me, but believe in me anyway. You should believe even when you cannot see it for yourself. Thank you, Brayden. And again, that came from our Spark Bible um, that we use in our Sunday school. It was very good reading. So Thomas sometimes gets a bad rap. He kind of is labeled as always doubting. And he probably didn't always doubt. He probably sometimes got hungry. Maybe he got tired. Maybe he had other feelings besides doubting or questioning. But that's kind of how he got labeled in the Bible. And some people think that doubting is the opposite of faith. But maybe doubt is just normal. Maybe it's part of being a disciple or following Jesus. You know, everyone has doubts. Faith means that we work through our doubts by talking to our pastors, talking to our parents or our grandparents and talk it out and, and then understand that it's okay to have questions. And then that grows our faith so that we can start believing without having to see. So Pastor Katie, did you have anything to add? No, but I thank you, Lynn, and thank you, Brayden, because this is a great time for us to just say, you know what, pause. Maybe you have a question right now as you're listening and you want to talk to somebody. You know what, go find a, a big person in your house and ask them the question that's on your mind. It might be something simple like, what color was the hair of Jesus? But it could also be something big mm -hmm. like, does Jesus listen to me when I pray? Those questions mean that we want to grow in our relationship with God and we grow in our relationship with one another. That's what we're doing whenever we meet. We are having our heart grow bigger. So doubting Thomas, hmm, what about growing Thomas? What about faithful hmm. Thomas? What about a Thomas who wanted to have hope? He just didn't know what it looked like. The story's not done yet. Hey, we have so much more to share with you. We want to make sure that you had fun with your Easter kits that you got a week ago or so, and then look forward to seeing you in a week or so. So don't forget, as things continue, like a church, we're going to meet together for, for fellowship. We're going to meet together for worship. Stay tuned and always have moms and dads go to holytrinitynl.org for all the information. I think Lynn's going to close us out in a prayer today. And I want to thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. Here's our closing prayer. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear God, we all have doubts and questions about lots of things, the future, our world, our, the people around us, ourselves. Help us to believe in your love for us and your good works throughout the world. Amen. Thank you for coming. We love you guys. See you next week.